Hi everyone, welcome to SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. And I'm Maria. And here's our podcast. To the Realistic SLP. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I didn't want it to be the same again. Oh, uh, okay. I purposely didn't say welcome. That's good. That's good. You were flexible cognitively. Always. Mm-hmm. We're also being very cognitively flexible because we are just we're just drinking water. We're not eating anything. We've already eaten and, you know... We're not always going to want to drink alcohol. Yes. So right now we're drinking water. Because we drank enough yesterday, I think, because we yeah. recorded yesterday. Mm-hmm. And we went and out we went night out. on the town, and we want to protect our vocal folds, so we're That's drinking right. water. Yeah, so cheers, cheers to with our water. water. Some people say it's bad luck, but I'm okay without that. Like, yeah, I think water's that is, good. as long as you don't have faith in that being bad luck, oh. then, you know, you're fine. Just be cognitively flexible in that point of view as well right so um we are doing our episode today basically mostly about uh cognitive flexibility Mm -hmm. um so cognitive flexibility is the mental ability to switch between thinking about two different concepts and to think about multiple concepts simultaneously right it also is to think about something in a different way than you might traditionally think about it right so a very basic activity that you would work on in cognitive flexibility would be um, uh, tell me three reasons why I need scissors. Mm. I need to open a box. I need to cut paper. I want to curl a ribbon. Ah, so I'm being I was going to say cut my hair or something. That too. So I need to cut my bangs even though no one should ever do that. <laughs> even though we've bangs? all done it. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you done that before? Um. Uh, yes, but I'm not good now. So I, yes. I'm not good at cutting bangs. Right. No one should cut their bangs is yeah. my point. Mm-hmm. And you know that. Yeah. Because you tried it, and you were cognitively flexible, mm-hmm. you experienced it, and you learned a valuable lesson that, that no woman that. or man or anyone should cut their own bangs. Unless they're a hairdresser, they can cut their own bangs. True. True. So then yeah. there's... There's... Yep. Yeah, right? be flexible because you can never make a gross generalization. Right. You have to be flexible in your thought process because right. not everything is going to happen according to your standard or your protocol so we are deviating from our protocol we don't have wine or cheese and that's fine because we still have plenty to talk about of course we do (laughs) we're slps yeah we talk yeah we talk and we listen maria and i were thinking that we have to um have more episodes that are not with other speech pathologists because speech pathologists do um like to talk so it's hard when all of us are in the same room right and then we had mike here on a show Mm -hmm. Um, two shows yeah and i'm sorry to anyone who listens to these shows i don't think we really have traditionally introduced him and like he's just like mike's here mike's here (laughs) hey he mike is deb's boyfriend but we explained that we explained but that. I've said he's I my also, roommate. Yeah. You know, like we. I also like to have, would like to invite other people just because we want to start thinking outside the box. Right. And, like, you can learn from anyone and everyone. So why not invite, like, a dog walker who works for WAG and be like, sit down. Let's have a cup of coffee. Right. Coffee. Let's have some wine and cheese. Mm-hmm. What does a speech therapist do? And he'll be like, um, or she, they might be like, uh, you help people that stutter? And he'll be like... You think, you know, and like, right, let's yeah. just talk about. Yeah, but then we can also, still like, talk about speech in layman's terms, you know? Yeah, but also, speech is involved in everyone's job. Exactly. They have to communicate with the co workers, the clients, right. and stuff. So, yeah, it's just like, so what are the things that impact your ability to communicate? Right. Do you ever get nervous right. when speaking with some, like, a client mm-hmm. or um, somebody? Yeah. But yeah, so. Anybody wants could. to be a guest on our show? Message us. Yeah, write us an email. At SL, I mean, no, excuse me, SLP's wine and cheese at gmail.com mm-hmm. or slide into our DM on Instagram. Yes. SLP's wine and cheese pod, all underscores. And just be like, hey, I'm in bed I want to come hang out with you guys. <laughs> girls. Right. Yeah. We'll I mean, we do excessive uh, background checks and all of right. my uncles are cops. So, like, right. easy there, pal. Make sure you're yeah. not dangerous. We right. will find out. Exactly. I do have a certain subset of skills. Right. I used to teach kickboxing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, cognitive flexibility, it's an aspect of executive functioning. And executive functioning is your ability to execute, mm-hmm. plan, and execute, right. and finish a task Mm -hmm. so it's important to be cognitively flexible in order to complete any sort of 
task, task. that you are doing. Right. As um, simple as waking up and brushing your teeth. Get up. We'll go to the bathroom. Take the toothpaste cap mm-hmm. on off. <laughs> like sequencing. Off. Yeah. Sequence it. Finish it. Put it back. And then you remember how to do it. And then it's part of your habit. And yeah that's it like that's i'm just trying to keep it like simple in layman's terms so i have something <laughs> that i want to read and you can just interject and cut me off because it's like too I don't long do that no but oh, like it's okay. too long so like just like stop me and comment and i'm middle. gonna go with the flow wherever i feel i should okay. interject i will so basically i'm just gonna read a facebook status that i wrote in november and it's kind of long can i see how long it is first no okay um so i went to a three-day convention in la and i took a course on executive functioning by sarah ward which i highly recommend to anyone who is listening to this and to everyone everyone should know what this woman's talking about Mm -hmm. Um, yeah so therefore i shall sum, sum it up here and hopefully you are able to utilize your executive function skills to read the entire thing because i'm about to fix your life Wow. First off, what is it? What's executive functioning? Uh, executive functions let people plan, organize, and complete tasks, and it's reliant upon three major factors, which are one, mer- working memory, being able to keep information in the mind and then use it in some way, mm-hmm. cognitive flexibility, being able to think about something in more than one way, and inhibitory, inhibitory control, being mm-hmm. able to ignore distractions mm-hmm. and resist temptation. So those are the three things that you need to keep in mind if you want to plan and execute anything. Mm -hmm. Individuals with issues in executive functions often struggle with, one, paying attention, two, organizing and planning, Mm -hmm. three, initiating tasks and staying focused, four, regulating their emotions, and five, self-monitoring. So these are all the things that impact their ability to get things done. Uh So, so far, does this sound like you or anyone you know? Uh, I think I'm great at executive functioning, actually. Yeah, me too, I think. I am a planner. I am an executor. I (laughs) did not sound good. I have a to-do list. I love to cross things off my list. I love to look Mm -hmm. at a calendar and be like, I'm going to go here, there. I'm going to do this, then. It makes... I want to go to Greece, let's say, June 21st. I'm leaving. Therefore, I need to get my nails done here. Make an, let me make an appointment now so I get so the time I want. So you're visualizing your future self completing these tasks. Right. And that's all about executive functioning, yeah. too. So that's... So the majority of planning happens outside of the environment where the action will occur. Right. And so Thus we have to planning. teach... Yes. And we have to teach kids to do that because some right. people, it doesn't come naturally to them. Yes. So right. we initially decided we were going to do this podcast episode about about how we started but I think the reason why we started and we've done so well is because we do have good executive functioning skills right and and we both have great skills that like complement each other right and a lot of people are giving us feedback and they're saying how we're like perfect opposites right yes yes and it's like people are like "Um, Maria's so smart and Deb you're funny no but (laughs) (laughs) well thank you but I would like to think and say you're funny too and smart and I think I'm funny I mean hopefully people think i'm funny yeah guys write me funny. in am i funny or not like, <laughs> like no help me like, out that's a genius they're like but she makes are. us laugh uh thank you i appreciate it but we complement each mm-hmm. other and we work together you know like i have this strength yes. like taking the pictures i'm good with the pictures but mm-hmm. you're good with like videos and you yeah. have and i think that you have helped me be more cognitively flexible oh. as per our conversation right. yesterday you told me that in a nutshell i'm a control freak and i'm like no yeah, but Emma, that didn't bother maria at all it did she, a little bit but she not didn't, she didn't bring it up for the rest of the night over and over again i was perseverating on that <laughs> i will i will i am aware that she didn't i was demand examples i just like to have him exa- i know mike was like hating that conversation <laughs> He was like, oh, my God. He's like, I'm never going to tell a control freak they're a control freak again. I just wanted to see how I'm a control freak. But, I mean, control freak, like, it it has a negative connotation to it, I suppose. But all I was saying is that, like, you know what you want, and you should never present yourself in a way of being so cognitively flexible because you're really not, and that's fine. Wait, I'm not that that cognitive. You're really, yeah, you're not, and that's fine. Just embrace who you are because, like, in your whole life, people are only going to love you For when they me. get their most authentic version of you. Right. Like you pretending to be something that you're not and easygoing in a way where you 
are not, right. that's not going to help you or anybody else. Like, you should right. be like, I am comfortable with the fact that I have my preferences uh -huh. and I enjoy doing things a certain way. And if that doesn't work for you, then this is not going to work ever. Exactly. So, like, there's no reason to put a front up. Right. Like, don't be like, I'm easy breezy because you're right. not. And that's right. perfectly fine. But sometimes I am. Good. So, but maybe, like, that's an opinion, obviously, right? I personally think there are times I could be easy breezy and other people are like, oh, my God, you're so chill. And yeah. there are other times I'm like, not. So, but well, I'd no, like to think I'm a balance. very chill in certain situations that, like, if you, I think that you commit to things with your whole heart, which is yeah. something that I talk to people a lot about. Like, when somebody asks you to do something, if you agree, you have to agree with your whole heart. You can't right. do it and then be resentful for mm. that favor that you've done mm. because now the ball is out of their court. You've agreed. It's your responsibility. You are now accountable. So you have to do it with your whole heart. You can't just say you're going to plant all the things in the garden and then, like, curse the person the whole time right. you're digging holes. Right, because then I just won't do it. And that's yeah. how when our episode with Mike last night, yeah. I was he was like, what are you looking for? And I'm looking for someone who's kind because right. I'm kind. Uh -huh. And when you do something out of kindness, you're doing it out of love. And when right. you're doing something to be nice, you're doing it out of fear. Right, yeah. So yeah. I do things yeah. out of love. So if you ask me to do something or go somewhere, and if I want to go, I'll be like, yeah, let's go. If I don't want to go, I'm going to be honest yeah, or I'll yeah, make up yeah. a good excuse like, oh, I'm really tired. Oh, I got to go to yoga mm -hmm. and I'm just not going to do it because I want to be authentic and I want and I want to bring the certain presence and vibe that I'm here because I want to be here because right. other people feed off of that. Yes, exactly. Like you're not going to want me there if I'm going to be mad and annoyed. Exactly. You're, it's going to be better for both of us mm -hmm. if I'm not there. Often like so Mike doesn't like to stay out as late as I like to stay out. Yeah, because you and I be... were like blabbermouths last night and yeah. Mike is like, can we go? And yeah. we're like, but wait for us to finish talking about Kate Spade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which well, R.I.P. Kate, Kate Spade. Yeah. Heart goes out yeah. to her family. But like, yeah, so I'll often, I'll be like, Mike, go home. I'll take a lift home. Like, so we'll be <laughs> hanging out all night and people are like, where's Mike? And I'm like, oh, he left. And people are like, are you guys in a fight? And I'm like, no, this is how our relationship works. Like, he's done. He doesn't want to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. And if I keep him here, he will be miserable. And resent you. And resent me. So it's just better that he goes home. He probably, he wants to take the dog out. He wants to feed him. Right. So, like, he wants he, to go to sleep. He wants to go to sleep. So, Basic human needs here. Yeah. So he doesn't want to be there. I want to be there all the that's time. That's good. You guys, I'm you like, don't party, be, party, party. Don't be that couple that's, like, clinged at the hip. I can't take no. that. But other people can't take that like you leave and i leave what's that we came together yeah. we leave together we're a couple you know yeah. and that's fine too whatever yeah that you doesn't know? work for us in our yeah no i'm so. just saying for yeah. other people it works mm -hmm. i don't know i'm not in a relationship so i can't say which one works for me so yeah but you're in your prime i am in my prime hello but then okay so going back to right. the executive functioning mm -hmm. so reflection is a big part of executive executive yeah. functioning that's why i like to journal it's a good yeah. self-reflection and this is how we notice challenges, pause, think about options, and put things into context before we respond. Mm, so reducing Reflecting. impulsivity, yes. too, is a big one. Yeah. So definitely reflect, but at the same time, like, chill with all the reflecting because processing speed. <laughs> I think that's good for me. Yeah. So Maria, just stop it. Just stop being a control <laughs> yeah, freak. stop <laughs> reflecting too much. I don't yeah. reflect enough, maybe, but you kind of reflect a lot. I'll help you reflect, and you help me stop reflecting. Okay. We're, this is our strengths. But the together. reason why is processing speed is the mo is the speed at which we go from reflecting to doing. Mm. So if you reflect too long, you're now wasting time because we need to get things done. Yeah, I've been told that. So it's important to go through the reflection process quickly and efficiently to solve problems on time. Mm -hmm. Many people with issues in executive function, they exhibit something called time blindness, meaning mm -hmm. that you are nearsighted to the future and often not now becomes never and that person finds themselves constantly unable to go from intention to execution. Right. Because they're too busy planning or thinking, I have time right. for that. Right, and we did not that. plan or think before we started this podcast. No. Um, we just did it. We just yeah. did it. We were like, this is what we want to do. Uh -huh. I initially um, wanted to do the podcast mostly because I uh, had the Instagram following, but I right. didn't feel like I had opportunities to speak 
like a person mm-hmm. and um, not a speech therapist <laughs> well because well, your a videos speech are therapist but right. i'm always doing the activity i'm not right. like going to the camera being like the reason why we're doing this is because of this this right. person challenge yeah. is no i know so it's yeah so i'm yeah. like only doing the activities right and then people would ask me questions i'm like i'm not typing all of this right so it's nice to just be able to speak about speech pathology yeah. and like the things behind it mm-hmm. and also kind of i th- I think there's a world of uh, too much perfection of speech pathology on Instagram, and it, it irritates me. Uh-huh. So I wanted to be like, um, this is what I do. Sometimes I, I wash my hair. Sometimes I don't. Right. Um, sometimes my socks match, and yeah. other times <laughs> I have no socks. Not. I only I've been only wearing Mike socks. Like poor Mike, he has no socks because I just take them off. Because okay. I can't find any socks. Yeah, you socks. can just go to TJ Maxx and get like, I just a bought a of package socks. of socks, but they, I think that they go missing. I think there's sock monsters. Maybe the dogs. They do. They do. They, but, they take the yeah, dogs. So, yeah, but so you had this great idea, and randomly I'm at work, and uh, mm-hmm. my phone's out of the way, and then it was my prep, and I look at my phone, and I see a text from Deborah. And mind yeah. you, I haven't really spoken like text wise with Deborah, maybe months. Yeah, not a ton. Yeah, and that was fine because yeah. Deborah was always someone I was cool with. Like mm-hmm. we met at clinic. I learned a lot to be creative. Like from that didn't make sense. You were very creative, and I admired your creativity. I was Thank like, you. I got the coolest clinic partner. She's <laughs> so not your type A SLP. Like I remember you showed up to clinic wearing like a like oh, a nineteen fifties looking dress. I'm like, what is she wearing? But you look like cute and professional. And you're like, it's laundry day. I had to wear a dress. Yeah. But you look cute. Like you showed was up in clinic dots? with it. Yeah, it was like yeah. polka dots and a little bolero. You looked like you set that in nineteen fifties. Uh-huh. And I I'm wearing like, like my though. uniform, like my slacks, my my flats slacks flats and a button down shirt you yeah. know and there i am in a polka dot and dress then, and i'm like but you know what yeah. i have some cute dresses and i never mm-hmm. wore them to clinic and you were professional yeah so anyway i whatever. do have this theory that the the closer i resemble a disney character the more receptive children will be to me so wow. that day i was being Minnie mouse and i'm sure i probably had a red headband on because that's what i used to maybe bear. yeah um maybe. yeah so that's why i like i just i like oh. look like a princess so that people treat me like one Okay, I'm going to yeah. start doing that. Do it, yeah. So, anyway, you texted me. Yeah. So, anyway, I loved I you to begin to with. St- oh, and, yes. uh, yeah. And then you had no slides. Yeah. And then I felt <laughs> bad for you. And then I was like, that's my clinic partner. Nobody make fun of her. I had your back. Thank you. And then we were close after grad school. Like, we went out. We yeah. had our breakup. We were living the single mm-hmm. life together. We went down the shore. Yeah, yeah, we went down the shore. I was talking to that Fist pumping. Guy. He was not hot. He was so hot. Oh, oh my I'm going to disagree with that. He was, but he's like... I remember he would always be like, it's so liberating. I'm not on Facebook. So I can't look at a picture of him because he's not on the internet. Maybe that's why you think he's hot because yeah. you don't have and that I'm visual reminder. Keep that. I'm yeah, going to keep that hot. I'll let you have he that. Was, he was awful, though. Like, he was a jerk. Why um, does that always happen? Why are the hot ones jerks? Because Taylor Swift has a great quote about that. We should, Let's we should end it with that one. End it with her All quote. Right, save the um, quote. But yes. yes. But so then I wanted to do the podcast one because of what I already said. Two because my boyfriend's a stand up comedian. Mm -hmm. He has a podcast, so I was like, I've watched this happen and I know I can do it. Right. Three You have the equipment. I have the equipment too. Duh. Um and then four, it was it's I think that uh there's a great benefit to doing projects for speech pathologists, but also for their clients. Like all my clients, they pretty much do projects over time Mm -hmm. the majority of our speech therapy is not like what occurred in that session right it's It's like what we're doing for a month that's great been writing a story until Mm -hmm. we wrote a full story with illustrated pictures that's what we're doing every single time until our project is complete because it's teaching kids to do executive functioning executive functioning and then they have a physical thing and like not everything's like instant gratification right. and now it's like we did the page one mm-hmm. no but i want no no no. tomorrow we'll do page two right. and you have to be okay with that and then it and it's patience all planning. right what are you planning something new every time right like a story for one month like it should be five pages long minimum right. you did it for five sessions right you drew you you wrote the paragraph you pre-planned it then you mm-hmm. put it on the official page you mm-hmm. wrote it down proofread it drew, you proofread it you added one more detail mm-hmm. drew you, a picture with and it and then you yes because sounds create words and words create pictures right and sentences create stories so we're mm-hmm. pairing a visual with what 
we now wrote. Right. So, you know, the girl turned into spaghetti because she ate too much spaghetti. So now I'm going to draw a picture of a girl eating mm-hmm. spaghetti. And then they could, like, act it out on Fun Friday exactly. or something. Exactly. Yes. Like, oh, melting into spaghetti. Yeah. Cognitive flexibility. There we go. So what else melts? Let's oh, go. Ice cream. Yeah. Melts, now your turn. Melts. You yeah. do ice Put cream melting. On and do hot potato. Oh, hot potato, hot potato. <laughs> so anyway, just saying how you were oh, texting me. Yeah. So I texted Maria. I wanted to do the podcast, but I um initially thought I would do it by myself, and I would wow. have people scheduled. Well, the reason why it was. I would have people schedule weekly, so I would have a new guest every Tuesday come to my apartment. So Maria mm-hmm. was like one of the first people that I text Aww. to come over. I'm like, I'm going to do a podcast. Do you want to be on it? And she kind of was like, oh, like, yeah, I'll do a podcast Yeah, I was you. so, like, and, excited. Yeah. And I was like, I literally typed to you, to what do I owe this honor? Like, <laughs> why? Like, I felt like, oh, my God, she picked me. I got picked first on the dodgeball yeah. team. Like, how did this happen? And I just thought at first you would only be a guest, but when you were ready to do it on board, I'm like, okay, now this seems even more accessible because the one challenge that I do find that my friends who have podcasts run into is that they aren't m- equally motivated or mm. equally driven or equally responsible. Right. And I didn't know, I didn't have faith that right. I could find anybody who was going to be as reliable and consistent other than myself. But right. Then you showed up and you gave me faith in Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Because you have, like, you, you treat it like it's your project. Right. It yeah. is. Yeah. And I love this project. It's a great project. And we we already know we work great together because mm-hmm. we were clinic partners. So right. started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> started from the bottom, now the whole team here. Yeah. So. Exactly. So then we got it done. So it's really important for, um, our clients to work on projects because it's better for us and um, it's also better for the planning but also it's as a speech pathologist or as a person in general you should have personal projects that you are working on mm-hmm. because we also were talking about how like our job is very at times energy draining um, yes. but when we have projects and things to look forward to that's energy boosting right so it, it like it gives us more energy where we feel like we're always giving out mm-hmm. our energy this kind of like gives some energy back to us yes and it does accelerates us through the very heavy loaded work week and even like other things not just work you know like right. we're all going through something and like i had issues i had issues about turning 30 and actually the episode we had about talking about turning 30 really helped me uh-huh. so it turned into like okay. fun slp night podcasting but slash therapy session yeah. and i journaled about it afterwards and i really processed that you know what i'm turning 30 you're right i can't stop aging no right can't stop it you and i shouldn't stop water, it though, because that stops aging i think well yeah i am i am drinking water right now mm-hmm. So I loved your water. What is my favorite drink? <laughs> SLP's water. water and ice. I don't know. <laughs> water. water. More water, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More, more water, water please. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. Um, but yeah, so yes. I've accepted that I'm turning 30 and right. I should actually just be thankful because I have an amazing life and I'm happy mm-hmm. and everything's going great and I can't say, no, my life is perfect because what is perfect? But Right. Well, complete is better than perfect. Right. My yeah. life is complete. Yes. You know, it's I don't want to say that because that sounds like I'm like. I don't know. Like, I'm done well, with it. You're I like, think no. that your oh, life should be yeah. complete and anything that you add to your life should supplement it, it rather than fill a void. Exactly, yes. Yeah, so, right. like, you shouldn't be like, I'm lonely, therefore I must yeah. fill this void with a human. Right. You must feel, like, happy in solitude and then find somebody who supplements your already happy existence. I agree. Because and only you can make you happy. Right. That's I, a big responsibility to I put know. on somebody else. I do make myself happy. Yes. And when you are happy inside, like other people are attracted to that and they could see it. Yes. In terms of family, friends, mm-hmm. clients, yeah. male or Everybody. female interest. Um, but going back to the episode we had with Mike, yes. I just wanted to say mm-hmm. how he was like, I kind of let Mike take the lead. I was like, he's our guest. Let him yeah. talk. Whatevs. But he was like, so what's... what he's saying is just to be funny. Oh, I know, I yeah, know. Yeah. But I just, I love how, like, this podcast kind of fell into my lap. Like, you texted me. I wasn't even, like, 
but I know on my phone I just right. put up my phone your text is there haven't even spoken to you in a few months mm-hmm. which was totally great to hear from you thanks and it was just a bonus you asked <laughs> me to be on a podcast right. like hello yeah thought you were just texting me to be like hey how are you long time no see you know yeah I don't even did I even say that I was like what no. are you doing on Tuesday yeah and I was like <laughs> nothing actually yeah and um so that fell into my lap and that's how I want like dating to be. I don't want it to be like online dating sometimes feels like a chore and something mm-hmm. I have to check off my to-do list and I already do a to-do list. Right. I just feel like romance and love and meeting people should just kind of like happen freely right, even though yeah. the guy does all the planning right I, mean, yeah. I want the guy to do the executive functioning yeah mike certainly did like good he asked That's me how you out know a he bunch, liked you and then i kept being like no 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 because i right. didn't want to date a comedian. persistence and uh yeah and then we had our first date and he canceled you'll hear all about that on this episode yeah i don't know if this one's coming out before the other one I'm probably gonna, no let's ahead. release his first because okay. we're referencing so, so you'll hear that um but then, yeah, he just never stopped. He just always uh, yeah, kept persistence. Trying. So it was good. Yeah. Um, I I like that. There I was think... something I was trying to get yeah. to. Okay, so we were talking about time blindness and how like not now becomes never, and this person finds himself constantly unable to go from intention to execution. So mm-hmm. if we just stuck got stuck in intention, like we intend to do a podcast and we were fixated on perfection. the planning and what we're gonna do and yeah. oh man there's a dog barking in the background right. we have to redo, redo the episode we no know. we're like this we is life mm-hmm. dogs bark we're in brooklyn there's an ambulance there's a motorcycle there's a helicopter real. it's not fake yeah. And we also take into consideration the fact that we have um, very busy lives mm. and our jobs are, we have a lot of responsibilities. So, like, we wanted to make sure that this podcast just supplemented our life yeah. and didn't take away from something else. So, right. if we fixated on perfection, right. we would never get anything done. Right. And, and we would probably neglect something else that is more important than our podcast. Right. This is. It's just, you know, we want to get it done. Right. So um, it's important to know that executive functioning has nothing to do with, like, doing things perfectly. It's about, like, you have to stop, reflect, initiate, execute. Mm -hmm. And that's what we we do. That's our plan here. Yeah. That is what we do. Um, I can keep going with the executive functioning, though. So Uh, let's pause there. Okay. Pause there. (laughs) Let's like, because this is a lot of information. Yeah, yeah. And we want to process this. Yes. And it's Saturday in the afternoon and I've only had one cup of coffee <laughs> and I'm kind of sleep deprived. So it takes some time for my brain to absorb it. That. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me like, just, okay, go when ahead. Pursuing tasks though mm-hmm. that are easy or difficult. Many people with executive functioning issues, they get dysregulated and they fixate on irrelevant details. Ooh. Like, is that would, an avoidance? I think because they're too worried about being perfect that mm. they're just like it doesn't get done because they're like editing, re-editing or like if it was a podcast. But, right. you know, just anything to get done. Um, I kn- we're Simple as putting on, on your different. makeup. Like, yeah. oh, this eye, smoky eye didn't come out. Let me wash the whole eye. And it's like, oh no, goodness, just yeah. blend it and fix it. And like, yeah. and my biggest thing is like, I believe that everything is meant to be. So like, maybe you were meant to like mess up that smoky eye. Maybe you're meant to blend it because now... You know, that, like, it's sets in motion other... Th- yeah, it sets yeah. into, uh, you got a free drink after that. Or maybe just led to, hey, I need more eyeshadow or colors. Like, or I'm too obsessed with putting all this makeup on. I look better naturally. Yeah. So I'm not going to wear the smoky eye. Right. Um, there you go. Yeah, so you never know. But I also read this quote. It's a different quote than what I said about Taylor Swift. But uh-huh. it said that if you're not embarrassed of your first piece of work, then you started too late. Wow. So that's why I'm like, put it out there. You're right. an artist. The world deserves to um, like see your creativity. And our growth. And, and your growth. Yeah. And your process. So no matter what, like if you remain consistent, you are going to get better over time. Right. So fixating on irrelevant details is not productive mm-hmm. and it's actually counterproductive. Correct. Because you're not going to get be productive. You're not My going favorite to get line, done. work smarter, not harder. Right. Yes. Yeah. Do the and I don't thing, mean be lazy or take shortcuts. I yeah. mean quality over quantity you know if you want to plan a lesson and go crazy with it great but use that lesson for a month adapt that lesson for your high school kids all the way to your preschool kids Mm -hmm. you're doing a lesson on plant lesson on planting if you have four-year-olds 
make a flower, make a beautiful label the parts, yeah. sensory ish play. You have high school. Let's talk about comparing and contrasting. Let's talk. Let's research yeah. GMOs. What I are love those? Comparing and compra- contrasting. contrasting. Yeah. Even with simple things, even for high school, like think about it. Like so, I'm gonna. So Wanna lions and tigers cont- are the same because they're lions, wild animals. They're wild animals. They're felines. Right. Yeah. Oh, um, I didn't know bears are felines. I said lions and tigers. I didn't oh, say sorry. <laughs> so, oh, I, I, I'm there. Lions and tigers yeah. and bears. Oh, my. <laughs> but they're different because, and like, what are the differences between those things? And right. I recommended this to somebody who's licensed who was struggling with figuring out what to do. They're like, well, we're in high school. These kids are in high school. Like, what do they care? Like, they don't need to learn about lions and tigers. I'm like, do you already know everything about, like, what is the difference between a lion and a tiger? Right. Do you know? No, you don't. Because right. you're not National Geographic. Right. Like, we could all benefit from learning about, like, right. anything. Yeah. Because <laughs> so. even within that lesson, there's, I'm sure, vocabulary words. Yeah. There's, like, working on their fluency, their reading. Then they could how, write about uh, it. Like, like, oh, right. Like, how adaptability, mm-hmm. what diet, right. environment. Everything. There's so many things. So don't think, like, you don't know everything about sharks. Right, I don't. Uh, and sharks might, they're not a juvenile topic. It's just, like, we get older and we pay attention to irrelevant details. But right. we should know more about sharks. They're right. part of our world. Yeah. You know? Especially when we go to the beach. Yes. We're in their environment. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no. Oh, scary. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look up dolphins. that Taylor Swift yeah. quote. I well, love dolphins. So I don't like gonna... dolphins. What? They're the rapist of the sea. I know. I heard that. But whatever. I still like them anyway. So yeah. yeah. Maybe Taylor like uh, <gasps> Swift quote. Yeah. And so while you're doing that, I'll just talk about um, the water was very refreshing. Mm-hmm. And it was a refreshing to drink the water and show how cognitively flexible we are. Yes. And how I wasn't like a control freak in that. No, what do you mean we're going to drink water this episode? It's called wine, it's and, called cheese. wine and cheese. But today we're SLPs Peas. more water, please. Yes. Yeah. SLPs more water, please. So we were going, we we're talking about that like really hot guy. Mm, he um, wasn't that hot, he but was okay. so hot. Oh my God. Okay. Every time he talked to me, I was like, why are you still talking to me? Like, I'm really trying to just seem normal. Right. <laughs> I'm, I can't. Function. And I knew what was. All my executive functions were gone. Right, yeah. <laughs> and I was just sitting by watching this, like, why, Deborah? Why? But I was yeah. like, let him, let her do her thing. Yeah, See, I didn't con- try to control that situation. I just let that unfold. Thank you. I appreciate that because that guy was, he was supposed to be in my life on purpose. And it was uh, fun okay. for a little while. Good. You needed that. But yeah, he was a jerk. But yeah. anyway, um, Taylor Swift has this quote when she's like, when I was a little girl, I used to read fairy tales. In fairy tales, you meet Prince Charming and he's everything you ever wanted. In fairy tales, the bad guy is very easy to spot. The bad guy is always wearing a black cape. So you always know who he is. Then you grow up and you realize that Prince Charming is not as easy to find as you thought. You realize the bad guy is not wearing a black cape and he's not easy to spot. He's actually really funny and he makes you laugh and his hair is perfect. Hmm, that is perfect. (laughs) And uh, on that that note, note, this has been... SLPs, SLPs more water, water, please. please. I'm Deb. I'm Maria. And thanks for listening. Yes. Sayonara. Bye.